Hi everyone. Um, so my name is Kathleen. Uh, definitely not super comfortable doing uh, any videos or anything like that. Like where do you hold it? Up here or there? Anyways, um, Jordana, the owner of Cravings, uh, asked me to do live about my pregnancy and my postpartum journey and my healing and my pelvic floor dysfunction. So I just wanted to be super open with everyone, be very real, really honest, because I know that so many women struggle alone or they feel really embarrassed about things that are happening to them while they're pregnant or postpartum. And I just wanted to share my story because maybe it will help somebody and maybe it will help some feel less alone. Maybe it will help somebody heal. I'm not sure. So um, what I'm going to start with is my pregnancy with my first son. So he's three and a half now. When I was pregnant with him, I worked out the entire time. I was super active. I think I slowed down my working out probably three weeks before I was due uh, I thought that, oh, you know, I'm going to be working out super fit during my pregnancy. I'm going to have the best labor, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, when I gave birth, it was horrific. <laughs> I was in labor for 36 hours. Then, you know, we almost lost our son. His heart rate was almost gone. So they had to use the forceps and I had an episiotomy and it was just a whirlwind and it was not what I expected at all. And, uh, after I gave birth, I felt so uncomfortable. I actually don't think that I could walk around the block for probably a good two months. I just felt like something in my pelvic floor area was wrong, but I didn't know what. And I was also super concerned about getting my body back and looking a certain way. And so I went back to the gym and which is fine. Working out is great. Uh, I exercised, I pushed myself so hard. I was trying to do every exercise and heavy weight lifting workout that I did before I was pregnant at six weeks postpartum. So finally, by the um, five month mark, I was at the gym, I was doing a leg press, a really heavy leg press, and uh, something didn't feel right. I just felt like, okay, I'm usually experiencing pain, but this does not feel right. I feel a heaviness down below, like what is happening? So I called my gynecologist and I was panicking. You know, I felt a pressure down in my pelvic floor heaviness. I couldn't keep my tampons in. Ugh. Like there was just so many things and I just knew something was wrong. So I went to pick up my gynecologist and she said, yeah, you have a prolapse. You have a grade one front and back prolapse, uh, which just means that my pelvic floor organs inside shifted down. And then she, you know, kind of told me, you know, I, I don't know if you can be exercising again. You might have to stop what you're doing because you have a prolapse. And I was like, uh, I thought people who are 55 get a prolapse, like, I, why, I'm, I'm 26, like why, why am I being diagnosed with a pelvic floor dysfunction at 26? I worked out throughout my entire pregnancy. I, I tried to, I don't know, eat balanced meals. I thought I was doing everything I was supposed to do, but no, nope, there I was with the prolapse. And I also had diastasis recti. So I had a three finger space ab separation and then I had a prolapse and I was basically told no exercise, no working out, nothing, and we don't know if you'll ever heal. So I remember going home and crying because I was in so much pain down below, and I was told that I wouldn't be able to exercise or basically do anything I loved. Um, it was really disappointing. It was super shocking. There's so many women that have a prolapse that might not even know or do know and are told the same thing. Who are struggling and are depressed you know even a lot of women are experiencing leaking and we're often told oh there's nothing you can do about it welcome to motherhood well no screw that why should we have to suffer we should be able to heal we should be able to restore our bodies we shouldn't be suffering and told oh this is just a normal part of motherhood uh, it's not fair we should be able to feel comfortable in our own bodies which is a huge reason why I'm very open about my story. What I want to let you guys know is that I have since healed. 
I don't have a prolapse anymore. I'm currently pregnant with my second baby. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no prolapse. So I would say my son was 18 months postpartum when I healed my prolapse. And it was thanks to pelvic floor physio. Uh, I think another thing to mention is that I wasn't diagnosed with a prolapse till I was five months postpartum. Uh, I didn't even know there was such a thing. I didn't know anything about leaking. I didn't know anything about any of that. So I thought I was in the, like, I was doing fine. Um, there's also a lot of women who can have prolapse, but they don't have the same symptoms I had, like the heaviness. Maybe they just have low back pain or something. But you still shouldn't be suffering with pain during pregnancy or after you have a baby. Pelvic floor physio can help you with that. And I think that's the biggest message I want to get across is that there is hope. I'm, I, you know, after I healed my prolapse, I went back to weightlifting. I'm, I'm doing running. I'm doing every type of exercise I love without symptoms. Make sure you find yourself a good pelvic floor physio. And if your doctor tells you, oh, sorry, you're leaking, it's motherhood. Don't listen to that. Go to pelvic floor physio you know, push to heal. You don't, you, women go through so much giving birth, uh, and, and, and being told that, oh, you're basically going to struggle with pain. Your life is, is not fair. We deserve better. And, and we need to speak up about that. Um, so yeah, my prolapse is healed now. I also healed my ab separation which is great. Uh, I just learned how to manage my pressure system. A lot of it for me was when, while I'm doing things in my daily life, like how, how was my breath when I was doing things? Was I holding my breath? For me, I was always sucking in my stomach to look a certain way. And that was adding a lot of pressure down below. Uh, I was holding my breath while I was doing my workouts. The biggest thing is if you do have pelvic floor dysfunction, don't have to stop working out. You just have to find the right way to do it, uh, which is why I ended up starting um, a side business of personal training where I help moms specifically who have ab separation, pelvic floor dysfunction, pelvic pain, pain while they're having sex, um, prolapse, anything like that where they're scared to work out. I help them get back to working out with confidence and symptom free. And um, obviously pelvic floor physio is number one for that. But I just, I don't want people to give up and I don't want people to think that oh it's just part of being a mom where you struggle with pain um so I think the other thing too is that we are so pressured to look a certain way after we have a baby like it's actually insane how we think we have to look like we never had a baby <laughs> like I just I don't know and I think that's a lot of the reason why after my first I pushed myself so hard because I wanted to lose this weight but it's like who who cares what you look like? The biggest thing is that, you know, your baby's healthy and you're healing and taking care of yourself. Frick, you have to take care of a newborn baby, feed them if you can breastfeed them, bottle feed them, you're up with them all night, you're trying to keep the house together, you're trying to do everything, and then, oh, on top of it, sorry, but you have to look like you're stick thin. It's bizarre, like, who cares what our bodies look like? But that is a lot of the reason, you know, we have a lot of pressure to look a certain way and I, I think that as moms we need to lift each other up and not comment on each other's bodies and in, and when you see someone instead of being like oh you look so skinny just be like oh you have great energy right now like compliment them on something else um, and then we also need to be super open about pelvic floor dysfunction and the things that we're struggling with and not accept oh this is motherhood is the answer. Um, the other thing I want to say is that I am pregnant with my second right now. I haven't been having a very good pregnancy. Uh, pregnancy and me just don't seem to go hand in hand, but uh, I'm currently 31 weeks pregnant, and at 27 weeks, our little boy tried to come, and then again at 28 and a half weeks, so it's been very stressful, so I am on a bit of a bed rest right now, and it's hard because I'm not allowed to do really anything physical, and. I love doing things like that. Um, you know, I was really scared to have a second baby. I am I am a little bit scared still because I don't want to, you know, have a difficult birth again and then end up with a prolapse or something. But uh, one day one of my friends said to me, you know, are you going to let the fear of what could happen again 
prevent you from living your life and having another child. So I, I have, we're obviously pregnant again and, uh, I'm going to try to stay focused on the positives and if I end up with a prolapse again and I have an ab separation again then I know okay go to pelvic floor physio uh, be positive stay hopeful and uh, work through it so if any of you have any questions about anything to do with leak gain anything to do with ab separation anything to do with pain drain sex anything to do with prolapse I mean, just, just anything, feel free to reach out to me. My whole Instagram page is very um, open, honest, and raw. Uh, I just think it's important to be open about everything that we struggle with. And also, one of my really great support systems is Haley Lasha. She's the owner of Warman Health and Physio. She is a great person to direct questions to if you have any. And... Uh, Jordana is amazing. You know, she owns Craving. She's an excellent business owner. And a lot of moms come to her store, but she wants moms to know that there's a lot of support in our city. So I think she feels very passionate about doing videos like this where women feel less alone. And you know that Cravings is a community and that, you know, she can send you towards certain support systems to help you out. Um... I'm not sure if I have anything else to share. Yeah, I guess my biggest message is just if you do have a pelvic floor dysfunction, if you are leaking, go and get help. It's a sign of dysfunction. If you have an app separation, go and get help. It's also a sign of dysfunction. And know that if you go to a progressive pelvic floor physical therapist, they're not going to take exercise away from you. If if there's a pelvic floor physical therapist who is um, proactive and they're keeping up to date on their courses, they will help you exercise. And you might have to modify a few things like um, say you're doing your squats, you might have to add in some different types of breaths while you're doing your squats. Or maybe instead of a 100 pound squat, maybe you'll be doing a 75 pound squat. There's different things that they'll do with you to help you uh get back into feeling like yourself and the other thing that I guess I kind of wanted to touch on is that a lot of people think doing kegels is the answer to making sure your pelvic floor you know doesn't become weakened or you don't leak or anything like that but actually a lot of the time you have too tight of a pelvic floor I've actually talked to a lot of pelvic floor physios who say that 98% of their clients have a pelvic floor that is way too tight and that's why they're leaking or that's why they're having pain with sex. So they actually need to do the opposite of Kegels and learn how to relax their pelvic floor. So I don't know. I'm very passionate about all of this just because I know how alone you feel and you feel embarrassed. Oh, I don't want to tell people I'm leaking or I don't want to tell people I have a prolapse. Like, frick, like, I talk about my prolapse to everybody. My husband's like, you need to stop sharing your prolapse with everybody. But I'm like, you never know who's suffering. Like, you don't know. Like, I, it's a part of my life. It, it, you know, it made me the person I am today. It brought out my passion I didn't know I had, which is talking about pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, yeah, I think that's kind of all I have to share. If you guys need anything at all, I'm here to support you. Obviously, Haley from Mormon Physio is there to support you and Jordana as always. So, yeah, it was thank you for anyone who tuned in. <laughs> okay, bye.